this morning I received in the mail this plug and socket. Now this plug and socket is a five pin, same style as what's been used on the back, being a five pin rather than the ones that are existing. It can't be confused. And one of the problems I had was when I set up the BL touch, these five wires had to be wired into the box. So I had to open the box up in order to unplug these to separate it from the printer. And I don't like this idea. To me it's annoying um, and defeats the purpose of having a plug. Having that plug on there is a really good idea. I like that idea. And not being able to unplug these ones the same way is a problem. So I got these. So I'm going to fit that plug to these wires and this to the back and then make up new wires to replace these ones. I've actually got all of the connectors and plugs I need to do it, although this wire will go straight. That's not an issue. Solder those on and plug everything together. So the next step will be to put a hole in here that size and then I can mount this into the box. And I dropped a washer in there I didn't realise was there. Alright, I'll be back shortly after I drill the hole. I want to take this outside and I want to take a great deal of care because I, this is a metal box and I don't want any of the metal swarf on any of the control boards. Okay, now that I've got the hole drilled and I was as careful as I could not to uh, uh, catch any of the wires inside and to make sure no swarf got in anywhere in there. I used a step drill to drill it out to 16 millimeters and as I drilled it, I drilled it face down, not over the power supply, so that any swarf that did fall, fell down and outside. I was then careful to make sure I blew out all of what was left and I gave it a little bit of a touch up on the inside with a file, again being careful with the swarf. Now at this point I could mount it, but that's just going to make life difficult for me. Okay, so I think what we need to do is solder our wires on. Now before I get too carried away with soldering wires on, I want to make up a new header cable to go from the plug to the board. And for that we have this little bit of wire, three strands, a bit of ribbon wire, nothing special about it. Those wires here, it's actually the same size, and just so we know in advance what we're doing, we need a three-way plug. and we need these sockets, not the pins. So these are the socket pins, or the socket components. And these are all crimp on. And that's my crimping tool. It's a Plato SN-01BM. I bought that one from Banggood. as part of a kit with a different set of crimps. Okay. When you're looking at this crimping tool, if I can get it to focus, you'll see that it's actually not straight flush all the way across. There's a high and a low spot. So what we want to do is bring this in so that these little arms hook on the edge of that high and then close this up so that it'll hold it. For me, that's two clicks. It may vary with different brands and even the same runs. 
With these, you don't want them to be too long. When you look at one of these crimps, they have the larger wings. If I can get this to focus. They have the larger wings which clamp on the insulation and then the smaller ones which clamp on the wire itself. And you don't want it to go past the end of that part or else it'll block it, the pin going into the socket and make it very difficult for you. So don't strip too much back. Hard to see it in the camera, but that's only far enough in. Okay, so there's a right way up with these. Make sure you've got them all the right way up when you try and feed them in. Now, you'll see that one end of this is actually slightly smaller than the other end. Trust me, you want to feed it in the big end. <laughs> also make sure that your little tags are facing up and that the actual crimp part that you see is also facing up. When you get them all the way in, they will click. Got a little bit of extra insulation around there. And then they won't come out. Ah, oh, crap. That one didn't take. that's our cable all crimped up so the only reason I'm doing this is so that when I unplug the head I can also unplug the BL touch okay so these pins are numbered one two three or five so I'm going to use pins one two and three for this and this is the plug I had been using I'm going to cut that off that's something I made before I had the crimps and I will solder those wires direct onto here as well and that'll be the inside done I think what I might do is get a vise. Now this connector does have flats so I can clamp it on the flats. That's better. Okay, these are way too long for what I need. Okay, so the first three wires I've connected up are the BL touch control servo, so to speak, and these two are actually for the limit. And in this case, they actually connect to the old Z limit. So the Z limit's not actually used. Okay, 
Now when I wire up the plug, you may notice that I hook the black wire up to where this red one is and the white wire up to where the black one is. I actually found that if I hook it the other, the other way around, it doesn't work. I discovered that in the uh, video I did of installing the BL Touch, which I split over two videos. And I'll link in the description. And I'll see if I can get a link up top, up, up around here somewhere. Okay, so they're all on there. Now, one of the things I do like about this rework station is I have a hot air unit. I'm running it at 220 degrees C. And it just has a fan in it and a heating element, and it just heats the air up. There's a temperature sensor in it, and it's POD controlled. So it's, well, I've got this set for 182. But that's more than enough to heat, heat shrink and shrink it down. So that's our socket. Feed that through the hole. Feed our wires through the hole of the washer and the nut. If I can get my fingers under it. Now, make sure you have got this unplugged when you do this. So that plug will now fit in there and do up. This plugs back into the Z axis limit. And that's on. Okay, so now I put the power supply back in. I am considering getting plugs and making all of those plug in as well. So that may come out in another video. You don't need to over tighten these. Remember it's only thin sheet metal you're going into with a few threads. It's not difficult to over tighten these, particularly with the leverage on these tools. This is the con key that was supplied with the CO10S5. Well given this, it is well constructed the case. Now, for those of you who are wondering, how am I going to remember what wires I put where on the socket? The answer is actually quite simple. Uh, because I can go back and look at the video when I actually put it all together. Now, just something to be aware of, the red and the blue wires are actually crossed. Now, just letting that cool down a little bit before I feed another bit of heat shrink 
which I'll pull back and I'll have for some overlap. And that gives somewhere for our clamp to purchase on as well. So we put the red wire into terminal 5 and I know from the past the black wire needs to be connected to the red and the white to the black. If you're using side cutters to strip these wires, they are sharp and they will cut through those wires very, very easily. So be very careful. You might pay to practice on something that it doesn't matter so much on, like a bit of old ribbon cable. Just to get into practice. It is a skill. Now in the plug, they swapped the blue and the red wires around. So it was like so. So we're going to have to do something similar in here. And that's our modified bell touch entry. So now, the bell touch is in the same cable all the way through and is plugged in as well as the head. Okay, on the next video, we'll complete the construction of the case for the SSR on the heated bed and we'll put it all together. So we'll see you in that video. To make sure you don't miss it, click on subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you then.